Hello and welcome to this getting to know the specification session for the T-Level Technical Qualification in Digital Production Design and Development Occupational Specialism. In this session we will give a brief overview of the structure of the technical qualification and then take a high level look at the occupational specialist component content and assessment. This slide contains an overview of the technical qualification or TQ for short. The TQ is split into two components, the core and the occupational specialism. The core is 600 guided learning hours and has three assessments. There is a getting to know the specification recording specifically for the core component, and this is available to watch on demand via our website. There is one occupational specialism, digital production, design and development. This is 600 guided learning hours and is assessed through an occupational specialist project. For this particular TQ, your students must undertake the core component and the occupational specialism. The core and occupational specialist components can be delivered however you feel is best for your students, the integration of their industry placement and access to expertise and resources at your centre. For example, you could deliver the core in year one and the occupational specialism in year two or you could deliver both components at the same time or in a staggered way so the course starts first then dual teaching and finishing off with the occupational specialism the choice is up to you and for more information on delivery please make sure you attend our getting ready to teach events the aim of the rest of this session is to give you an introduction to the digital production design and development occupational specialism We'll take a look at how the component is laid out in the specification and an overview of the assessment structure for the specialism. The Digital Production Design and Development Occupational Specialism has six performance outcomes or POs for short. You will see in the specification there are eight knowledge or skill statements your students must achieve. In the main, these are identical to the performance outcomes you see here on the screen, except for PO2 in the specification, this has been split into three. Design, implement a solution using at least two appropriate languages, and test a software solution. Each performance outcome is broken down into several skill statements, and these are what your students are expected to be able to do or demonstrate. There are also a number of underpinning knowledge statements. These are what your students need to know and understand in order to be able to demonstrate the skills. This is an example of how the specification is laid out. This shows the start of performance outcome 1, be able to analyse a problem to define requirements and acceptance criteria aligned to user needs. At the very top, under what students need to learn, you'll see the first knowledge or skill statements for the PO. In this instance, PO 1.1, understand the stages of software development lifecycle and be able to apply them to digital projects. 1, because this is performance outcome 1, and point 0.1, because this is the first specialist skill within the performance outcome. Next, we break the skill down further, and here you can see the first part of this breakdown, lifecycle stage, research and familiarization. In the specification, you'll see that PO1 is actually broken down into seven parts. Each part are then broken down again into several bullets and sub-bullets, giving you the elaborated content for each part of each knowledge or skill statement that makes up each performance outcome. In the right-hand column, we've included the skills from the general competency framework that your students will need to have the opportunity to demonstrate through the knowledge and skills covered in the performance outcome. For example, you can see here E1, E2, M2, D4, etc. And these reference the English, Maths and Digital skills from the framework. You will find the full list of competencies at the front of the specification. There is a single synoptic assessment for this occupational specialism, which is an extended design, development and implementation project that is set and marked by Pearson. The synoptic element of the project is important to ensure students can demonstrate threshold competence and that they're able to evidence all of the skills required by the performance outcomes. Your students will undertake the project under supervised assessment conditions. The assessments will take place over multiple sessions up to a combined duration of 67 hours. The project consists of several activities grouped into three substantive tasks, which total 145 marks and will be awarded at pass, merit or distinction. 
Each task will be completed either at a date and time set by Pearson or during a window, again set by Pearson, where you will schedule supervised assessment sessions. We will look at an indicative assessment schedule in a few slides time. The project will present the students with tasks that emulate activities undertaken in workplace situations and there will be an overarching narrative linking the tasks together. This is a substantial project and the tasks are mapped against the different performance outcomes. Your students will be assessed on their application of the skills listed in the performance outcomes but they will not be assessed against specific knowledge outcomes. Instead, they'll be expected to draw on and apply underpinning knowledge when applying the skills in response to the activities in the tasks. The project's outcomes will consist of a portfolio of evidence submitted either electronically or as a hard copy. You'll need to refer to the individual task guidance included within the assessments for further information on how to facilitate each task and how to collate and submit the evidence. In the next set of slides, we will look at the structure of the project in a little more detail. Now let's look at each of the tasks that make up the project. Task 1, Problem Analysis and Solution Design. Learners will carry out research in how a digital solution could meet the needs of the client and its customers and consumers. They will produce a proposal and a solution design. Task 1 is worth 58 marks and is completed over 20 hours. Task 2, Development of a Project. Learners will produce a functional prototype and document the process of its iterative development. Task 2 is worth 48 marks and is completed over 30 hours of supervised assessment within a four-week window. Task 3 – Preparing materials to support handover and evaluation of a prototype. This is broken down into two parts. Part A – To prepare materials for us in gathering feedback from technical and non-technical audiences. This is worth 24 marks and completed over 15 hours of supervised assessment within a three-week window. Part B is evaluating the prototype and recommended improvements. Part B is worth 15 marks and completed over two hours. There will be one occupational specialism project series per academic year. This is due to the large amount of content, the synopticity required, and as a result of the linear assessment model. To give you as much teaching time as possible, but avoiding the ESP window and the core examination date so as not to disadvantage students needing to access resets, the project will take place over several weeks across the spring and summer terms. The assessment window is set by Pearson. The date of the assessment window will be published in the key date schedule. This is published annually and is located on the digital TQ webpage. On the screen you can see an example timetable that gives you a notional view of how these tasks are intended to be organised. Please note, however, that this example is indicative and adjustments may be made in live delivery to account for different variables such as the changing dates for the Easter holidays and the placement of school and bank holidays. As you can see, the tasks have been spread out over 11 weeks. All of the tasks are scheduled by you within the permitted window for the task. This is to support manageability within your centre and to allow for students who benefit from access arrangements, especially additional time, to complete their assessments without tasks overlapping. This ensures that there is space, even for students who are permitted significant amounts of extra time, to complete the assessments in the intended order with no impact on further sessions. Where students suffer from illness during the assessment, the student will be able to complete the assessment at a different time to the remainder of the cohort as long as this takes place within the allowable window. If the student is too unwell to attempt the task at all within the window, then they will apply for special considerations. OK, so what's next? Please do familiarise yourself with the specification and the specimen assessment materials available on the website. Make sure you sign up to receive our monthly T-level e-bulletins and book onto the Getting Ready to Teach and Getting Ready to Assess events. You can also watch our administration support videos in our Engagement Hub and make use of the course materials available. Finally, please do contact us for more information. You can contact us via online, email or by post. The most direct method is via the Pearson Support Portal, which is an online tool where you can raise your query and track its progress. We'll inform you once a member of the team has a reply for you, and once you're in the portal, you can have the option to call our dedicated T-level phone line.
On screen, you can see two dedicated email addresses for administration and teaching queries. And if you prefer to communicate via post, you can use the address on screen. Thank you for listening to this information video. We do hope you found it useful. Please remember to take advantage of our Getting Ready to Teach events and don't forget to sign up to receive our monthly T-Level e-bulletin. Thank you.